Good day everyone, let's talk about geometric sequence. Now geometric sequence can be seen in art pieces, in roof designs, in tiles, and many more. Now what is geometric sequence? Geometric sequence is a sequence where the ratio of the succeeding term and the preceding term is constant. Let's take a look at this example. 200, 100, 50, 25, 12.5, and 6.25. What do I mean by the ratio of the succeeding term and the preceding term? So this is our succeeding term divided by 200. We get 1 half. So the ratio of 50, the succeeding term, and the preceding term 100 which is also the same as 50 divided by 100 is also equal to 1 half. In the same manner, 25 over 50 is 1 half. 12.5 divided by 25 is 1 half. And the ratio of 6.25 and 12.5 is 1 half. So the ratio is constant. It doesn't change. It is the same as 1 half in every ratio. So this is what we call as a common ratio. Let's take a look at the second example. 64a to the power of 6, 32a to the power of 5, up to 2a. Now this sequence, is this a geometric sequence? Now let's find out the ratio of the succeeding term and the preceding term. So in the first pair, this is the first term, this is the second term. So this is our succeeding term divided by the preceding term. So it is going to be equal to 2a. 32a to the power of 5 divided by 64a to the power of 6 is equal to 2a. Now, the next uh, pair of consecutive terms, 16a to the power of 4 divided by 32a to the power of 5, you'll find out that it, that it is also equal to 2a. Likewise, 8a cubed divided by 16a to the power of 4 is also 2a. That is also 2a, and it is also 2a. So the ratio is constant when we get the quotient of the succeeding term and the preceding term. So this is the definition of geometric sequence. All right, so one half for the first uh, sequence that we have and 2a for the second sequence are what we call the common ratio, commonly denoted as R. Now, geometric sequence is also called as geometric progression. Now, let's identify if the following sequences are geometric sequence or not. First example, 1 squared of 2, 2, 2 squared of 2, 4. Is this geometric or not? So, we are going to get the ratio of the succeeding and the preceding, so square root of 2 divided by 1, 2 divided by square root of 2, 2 square root of 2 divided by 2, and 4 divided by 2 square root of 2. So we are going to get square root of 2 in all of those ratios, therefore the ratio is common. So we can now conclude that this is a geometric sequence, wherein the common ratio is square root of 2. Now, second example, negative 5, 0, 5, 10, and 15. So is this geometric, uh, is this a geometric sequence? So common ratio, 0 divided by negative 5 is, okay, so that is 0. But 5 divided by 0 is undefined, so meaning this is not a geometric sequence. Third example, so this is the geometric function, u sub n is equal to 1 over 3n minus 2. So what, can, what we can do is to find the terms in the sequence. So if n is equal to 1, u sub 1 is 1, u sub 2 is 1 over 6 minus 2, that gives us 1 fourth. If n is equal to 3, so the third term is 1 over 7. And the fourth term, n equals 4, that will give us 1 over 10. So find the ratio if it is common among, uh, among pairs of consecutive terms. So 1 fourth divided by 1 is 1, but 1 over 7 divided, divided by 1 fourth is obviously not equal to 1 fourth. Therefore, this is not 
a geometric sequence. Let's have the last example. U sub n is equal to 2 times 6 to the power of n plus 1. So the same thing, uh, let's get uh, the terms in the sequence. So we will have if n is equal to 1, so the first term is 2 times 6 square, second term is 2 times 6 cubed, 2 times 6 to the power of 4 is our third term. If n is equal to 4, that will give us a 5 uh, as the power of 6. Okay, now let's get the ratio. Um, okay, so 2 to the power of 6 cubed, 2 times 6 cubed divided by 2 times 6 square. Um, the quotient is 6. Okay, and that will also give us uh, 6 for the rest of the ratios. Therefore, it is a geometric sequence wherein r is equal to 6. Okay, now, uh, what about making your own geometric sequence? So let's all begin with uh, 5. Let me give you an example. So multiply by 3. So I start with 5. So the next will be 5 times 3 is 15, times 3 is 45, then 45 times 3 will give me 135, then 135 times 3 is 405. So this is a geometric sequence. So you can check the common ratio is 15 divided by 5 is 3, 45 divided by 15 is also 3. Okay, what about yours? Another sequence could be if we multiply by 0 0.2. So again, our first term is 5. So this is the same as multiplying it by 1 over 5 or dividing by 5. So 5 times 0 0.2 is 1. That's, that's going to be our second term. Then 1 times 0 0.2 will give us a, a third term, 0 0.2. 0 0.2 times 0 0.2 is 0 0.04. And finally, our fifth term is 0 0.008. So this is uh, as an exam. This is also an example of geometric sequence, wherein, as you notice, a three and 0 0.2 will give us our common ratio, which is our R. So this will lead us to the general uh, terms. So let a1, a2, a3, a4, a sub n minus one, and a sub n be our geometric sequence. Um, so the first term is a1, and then for us to get a sub 2, uh, that will be a sub 1 times the common ratio r. So a2, or a sub 2, is equal to a1 times r, all right? And then to get a sub 3, we multiply the second term to the common ratio, so it will give us a2 times r. In the same manner, a sub 4 will be a sub 3 times the common ratio r. So, but this can be expressed in terms of a sub 1. As you notice, our a sub 2 is actually a sub 1 r. So we can substitute that here. So a sub 1 r times r will give us a sub 1 times r square. And then a sub 3 is actually a sub 1 r square. Then we multiply that by r will give us a sub 1 r to the power of 3. So looking at the pattern, it will give us a sub n minus 1 is equal to a sub 1 r to the power of n minus 2. And our a sub n, which is our general term, will be uh, a sub 1 times r to the power of n minus 1, right? It's n minus 1. Why? Because if uh, a sub 2, that's our second term, the power of r is 1. If uh, we're looking for the third term, uh, n is 3, the power of r is equal to 2. So if uh, a sub n, the power will be uh, n minus 1, which is the power of r. Okay. So this is now our general term or the n term, which is equal to a sub 1 r to the power of n minus 1. Okay. So this is a very important formula uh, that you need to remember. Okay. Let's go to example number 1. So Find the eighth term of the geometric sequence 64, negative 32, 16, and negative 8. So let's use the formula of a sub n, and that will be um, a sub n is equal to a1 r to the power of n minus 1. So uh, looking at the sequence, we will find the value of r, which is negative 32 over 64. Now let's be sure of this. 
uh, we can also get 16 over negative 32 and that will also give us negative one half and by the way it is also stated that the sequence is already geometric okay so how do we find the eight terms so a sub 8 is equal to the first term is 64 r is negative one half then n is equal to 8 8 minus 1 so 64 times negative one half to the power of 7 so this will give us okay so simplifying it you can use scientific calculator you can do it this way 64 is 2 to the power of 6 negative 1 to the power of 7 to the power of 7 then cancel out uh, the common factors and then we will get negative one half so the eighth term is negative one half second example is find the eighth term of the geometric sequence whose third term is negative two and the sixth term is 54. okay so using the nth term formula we can come up with uh, equations uh, like the third term is negative two so a sub three is negative two that is equal to a one r square so this can be considered as our equation one and then we can use the sixth term is 54 this information to come up with the second equation and that is 54 is equal to a1 r to the power of 6 minus 1 which is r to the power of 5 so let's name this as our equation 2 since since we're looking for a1 and the common ratio r then we can solve this simultaneously so the first equation can be rewritten as a1 is equal to negative 2 over r square. And then what we can do is by substitution, let's solve this simultaneously. So this a1 will be plugged in to our equation number 2. So solving this equation, we can, can, we can cancel out uh, r5 over r square, and then that will give us uh, r cube, uh, and then multiply to negative 2. So divided by... Uh, negative 2 both sides we will get negative 27 is equal to r cubed then we can get the cube root of both sides and this will give us r is equal to negative 3 so from there we can get now the uh, first term or a1 so a1 is equal to negative 2 over negative 3 square and this will give us negative 2 over 9 but what we want is the eighth term. So since we already have r and a1, so plug these values in in our uh, nth term formula. So a sub a is equal to negative 2 over 9. r is negative 3 to the power of 8 minus 1, which will give us 7. So negative 2 over 3 square, um, then multiply to negative 3 to the power of 7. You can cancel out. Uh, this and this will give us negative 2 to the power of negative 3 to the power of 5 and negative 3 to the power of 5 is negative 243 times negative 2 and the answer the eighth term is equal to 486 so questions like this you know what to do and that is by uh, using the strategy of solving it simultaneously but make sure that you can come up with two equations now let's proceed to our last example in the geometric sequence 256 128 64 32 which is the first term that is less than 0 0.001 so once again we can use our n term formula and then from this given information we can find the value of r 128 over 256 so we will come up with this equation 256 times the common ratio to the power of n minus 1 so 128 over 256 is 1 half and it says that uh, which is the first term that is less than 0 0.001 so this is our term that we're looking for and it must be less than 0 0.001 so let's solve this inequality so what we can do is uh, we can divide both inequality both sides of the inequality by 256 and it will give us um, 1 over 25,000 or 256,000 okay and um, the next thing that we can do is we can uh, find the logarithm of both sides okay so since n is an index and it's, it is unknown then we can use logarithm so logarithm of both sides is logarithm of 1 half to the power of n minus 1 is less than logarithm of 1 over 256,000 and then you can use the uh, law of index wherein the power will become 
n minus 1 times logarithm of 1 half. And then uh, we can expand this, and then it will give us n times logarithm of 1 half minus logarithm of 1 half. So um, we will now have this inequality, n is less than logarithm of 1 over 256,000 plus logarithm of 1 half divided by logarithm of 1 half. So now you can use your scientific calculator to do this and we will get n is less than 18.97. So since uh, n must be a whole number, uh, so this is 18.97 which is the first term that is less than. So that means the value of n is or the n term that we're looking for is actually the 18th term. Now you can check your answer by putting n in our original equation 256 over 128 over 256 to the power of n minus 1. So that will give us uh, to the power of uh, 17. So finding the value of that, in fact, we are going to get the 18th term which is equal to 0 0.001995 or to be sure you can also get the 17th term and uh, the 19th term and then you can actually compare um, which one is really the first term that is less than 0 0.001 okay so that's it for today thank you very much uh, once again uh, see you soon